Let's do a case study on ticket sales for Taylor Swift's big concert tour in 2023. November 17, 2022, about 14 million fans tried to buy tickets at 10 a.m. on the same day. Concurrent transactions broke the site, fans had 5-hour wait times and bots took over. So overall a disaster. Lots of articles in CNN, New York Times, Wall Street Journal. Daily apologies from Ticketmaster and Taylor Swift. Department of Justice starts investigating Ticketmaster. And if you think that's bad, let's wait until Taylor writes a song about Ticketmaster. So why didn't locks and parallel programming help them? Before we dig into problems on volume, lock contention, and how long the locks are held, we need to understand the user experience and the transaction flow. Let's use an imaginary site, TicketDisaster.com, to walk through the user experience. Swift fans were invited to log in at 10 a.m. They see virtual queues of tens to hundreds of people ahead of them. Now they are in. Now they have to select the number of tickets and also if they want the tickets together and they need to complete the transaction within five minutes. Next they select the zones they want to sit in. They pick 300. Denied, not available. They pick 500, denied again. They pick 600 and finally it works. Now they have about a minute and a half to fill out the credit card information, phone number, zip code, and eventually purchase. And the site is slow, timed out and have to re-enter the queue. Ticket Disaster is a simplified version of the original site but the pain and wait times were real. So why did this happen? Was it a lot of users? Is it like Visa? So let's break it down by volume, by locks they were using, and also how long the locks were being held. First of all, the volume was high. The peak looks like it was 10 to 50 X more than what a Visa-like system would, would encounter. 14 million fans buying tickets at roughly 10 AM versus Visa, which does between 60 to, to 300,000 transactions per second. Second, a lot of contention on few locks. In Visa, you have concurrent transactions and lock requests on 100 million plus different accounts. Case of concert tickets that are concurrent lock requests on the few seats and zones. Third, how long are the locks held for? In a Visa, it's less than maybe two to three seconds. In case of concert tickets, you're waiting for two to four minutes until payment happens. That is, you're holding locks on a few shared resources for minutes rather than seconds. That is, the waiting transactions are waiting even longer. As a reminder, when we started with locks, our intuition was lock each record for the shortest time possible. And the key question were which records and for how long. So how would we redesign TicketDisaster.com to make it work for high concert ticket volume? Here's one way to design TicketsFaster.com. Superfans had signed up a week earlier to give some basic profile information. In our new design, fans pre-fill credit cards, number of tickets, and top preferred zones. Same choices, just no time pressure. At 10 a.m. on the day, fans join the virtual queue, pick the tickets, pre-fill from prior preferences, and buy. No zone selection, no credit card entering, all already done before. So the clock and the traffic was not a problem anymore. Now let's get some ballpark estimates of average wait times for users. Now this is in the collab I've shared earlier. We want to sell tickets across 10 zones per stadium across 52 dates for concert tour. For our first cut, the number of total locks will be num zones times number of dates because that's the resolution at which users can make choices. Let's define the average wait time, assuming a uniform distribution of users across different dates and zones. So average wait time takes number of users, number of locks, and the time the a lock is held, and then computes how long a user is gonna wait. Example one, let's model ticket disaster. 300 seconds for lock hold times, and it's waiting for the user to commit. For a million concurrent users. Example two, Ticket faster only for 30 second lock hold times because we have the pre filled information as well as the time to buy, so much faster. Example three, 
Now we have 10x more granular locks. So instead of zones, we also allow users to choose within subzones. So we are multiplying the total number of locks by 10. In example four, we go even deeper and we have seat level locks. So 5,000x lock granularity. For example, Levi Stadium has 65,000 seats and that's across 10 zones. So do you get really 5,000x less contention? Unlikely because users may end up clicking on the same seats and may have more contention, especially when buying multiple seats. For this example, we'll assume a 500x speed up and you can play with other numbers as well. You can see from the run times, how long is the average wait time for the different examples. Example four may map to waiting in the virtual queue for a couple of minutes and then buying the ticket within a few seconds. We made some simplifying assumptions here, but hopefully it gave you some intuition for locks and performance. Try changing various assumptions in the Colab notebook. For example, the number of concurrent users, the total number of locks, as well as the time a lock is held on average. Now going back to our original example, you can't really fix peak for a popular artist. They are popular. However, you can redesign your system with more locking options, example subzones or seats versus zones, and hold locks for as short as possible. Example prior saved user information. I hope this case study helped give you more intuition on high performance transaction systems, especially when you have few shared resources such as concert tickets. Good luck designing your next system.